Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today's topic is chapter number 5, exercise 5.6, that is Remainder Theorem. Now before explaining the topic, let's discuss what is the basic purpose of studying this theorem. Since everyone loves to find a shortcut, whether it involves driving directions or some other type of long task. So for that, discovering a quicker or more, you can say, efficient way to arrive at the same point makes you feel good since you have most likely saved time, effort and money. So maths is filled with these type of shortcuts and one, is, uh, and one of the more useful one is the remainder theorem. Now what does the statement of the remainder theorem say? Here is the statement of the remainder theorem, which says that when a polynomial p of x of degree n greater than or equal to 1 is divided by a linear polynomial x minus r gives a constant r as remainder than r equals to p of r. This r represents our remainder. Now, what does this statement say? It says that the remainder theorem states when a polynomial p of x is divided by a linear polynomial x minus r, this is the polynomial p of x and is divided by the linear polynomial x minus r, then the remainder of that polynomial, uh, that or you can say that the remainder of that division will be equivalent to r. In other words, you, um, if you want to evaluate the function p of x for a given number r, you can divide that function by x minus r and your remainder will be equal to p of r. Now it should be noted that remainder theorem only works when a function is divided by a linear polynomial which is of uh, the form x plus number or we can say x minus Number. Now let's, uh, how does the remainder theorem save our time? Let's find out. But before applying it in the question, uh, let's discuss its proof. Let P of X be a polynomial of degree N greater than or equal to 1 is divided by X minus R gives a constant R as remainder than R is equal to P of R. This is the statement. What does this statement say? See, we are having this dividend. This dividend is our polynomial and we are dividing it with a divisor which is a linear polynomial. As a result, we will be getting quotient and the remainder. Now, remainder theorem gives you the direct process of getting remainder without long division. It will directly be giving you the answer for the remainder. If you are writing um, the long division in terms of dividend equals to divisor into quotient plus remainder, your result will be uh, somehow like this. X minus R is your linear polynomial which is multiplied with the quotient plus remainder. When you are solving this uh, part of it, you will be getting your polynomial P of X. So, if you are equating your linear polynomial X minus R that is the factor, if you are equating it with 0, you will be getting the value equal to x, x equals to r. When you are shifting minus r on the other hand side, it will be equal to plus r. So, for every step, you have to equate your factor equal uh, as 0. You have to equate your linear polyfactor with 0. So, x minus r equals to 0. This will be giving you the value for r. And see, and when you are substituting the value of r in the polynomial instead of x. Instead of x, you are replacing it with r. So as a result, see when you are subtracting instead of, uh, when you are subtracting r minus r, it will be equal to 0. So anything being multiplied with 0, you will get 0 plus um, remainder. So the final answer will be p of r equals to r. Here is the proof of uh, the remainder theorem. Now let's see um, how to apply it on a question. I have taken question number one of your exercise 5.6. By using the remainder theorem, find the remainder of the polynomial divided by x minus 1. The cubic polynomial is given. 
rewrite the question and name it as p of x this is a polynomial that is why we are writing or we are denoting it with p of x now in the next step uh, you have to take the factor the factor which is given in the question x minus 1 is our factor in this case i told you before um, in proof in the proof of the remainder theorem that you have to equate your factor with 0 so x minus 1 equals to 0 this gives us the value of r so r in this case is equal to 1 because when you are shifting minus 1 on the other hand side it will be equal to uh, uh, it will be equal to 1 so when you are substituting the value of um, x in as r and the value for r is because if you are using the remainder theorem the statement says that p of r equals to r so instead of x you will be putting in the value of r which is equal to 1 so after substitution see when you are putting when you are inserting the value of r as 1 your polynomial will directly be giving you the answer for r which is your remainder since we have proved it that p of r is equal to capital r capital r represents our remainder so after calculating this polynomial the values for it see the sum of 8 6 and 1 gives us 15 minus 11 which is equal to r and this is our answer so from here we will directly be getting the remainder in this case in this question our remainder is 4 so without applying long division we have calculated the remainder of this polynomial and we have divided it with the linear uh, you can say linear factor or linear polynomial let's solve another question question number two now this question is without performing division find the value of a when the polynomial is exactly divisible by x plus one now you have to focus on this word exactly divisible if the polynomial is exactly divisible by any factor, it means that the remainder should be equal to 0. Now, let's see how to solve this question. Again, you have to name this polynomial as p of x since it is a poly polynomial. That is why we are representing it with p of x. In the next step, you have to take the factor, the factor which is given x plus 1, equilated with 0. As a result, it will be giving you the value for r. Uh, in, the, in the proof we have equilated x with r so this hand side represents the value of r so in this case the value for r is minus 1 you have to write this statement since the polynomial is exactly divisible by x plus 1 therefore remainder equals to 0 now we have to equilate the polynomial p of r with 0 because its remainder will be equal to 0. Now here is the polynomial. You just insert the value of uh, x as minus 1 in this case because minus 1 represents r small r. So when you are plugging in the value of r in this polynomial your result will be this. Minus 1, taking cube of it is minus 1. When you are multiplying 2 with minus 1, your result is minus 2. Then, minus 1, when you are taking square of it, it is plus 1. And when you are multiplying plus 1 with minus a, your result is minus a. Then, third term, minus into minus gives you plus 2 into a is 2a. Plus into minus is minus 3 into 1 is uh, 3 minus 3 plus 2 as it is equal to 0. Now see we have equated our polynomial with 0. Why? Because we know that since the polynomial is exactly divisible by x plus 1 therefore its remainder for sure will be equal to 0. So beforehand we have equated the remainder with 0. So after um, solving or you can say that of after um, adding subtracting the like terms the two are the like terms minus plus minus sign of the bigger quantity that is why we are getting a here minus 2 minus 1 gives minus 3 equals to 0 as we have to find the value of a see the question says that without performing division find the value of a 
We have to find the value of a. So when you are shifting minus 3 on the other hand side, the value of a is equal to 3. This is our required answer. Topic related questions and examples are you can solve all the parts of question number 1, question number 2 and 3. Example 26 and 27 can be solved using the same theorem, remainder theorem. Thank you so very much.